Tales from the Treehouse. Hello, I'm Ben from Treehouse Theatre. I'm going to tell you a story, an old story, a myth or legend. These stories have been with us for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. There are stories like them in every society and every ancient civilization that the world has ever seen. They often tell us things about how people understood the world or how it comes to be how it is. And even if the stories aren't true in a literal way, they always tell us something about what people are like or what life is for. So relax, shut your eyes, and enjoy the pictures of the story coming into your mind. Here we go. Beowulf and the Dragon It happened long ago that a great and mighty lord and all his people but one were killed in a terrible battle. This one remaining man, in great sadness, buried all of his lord's treasure on a cliff overlooking the sea, in a huge mound of earth, a barrow, before dying himself. Many generations passed. The barrow became a grassy mound with only the tiniest way into the treasures inside, so tiny in fact that nobody found it, until a dragon, a creature with a nose for treasure like no other, did find it, claimed it for his own, and curled up on it to sleep. It lay there for many years, its scaly coils blanketed amongst the rings and bracelets, gold plates and goblets, silver coins and helmets, the sword hilt studded with jewels. It may have stayed quiet for many more, but in the time when Beowulf was an old, much-loved king, having ruled his people wisely and peacefully for fifty years, the dragon was disturbed. A churl had upset his master. A churl, of course, is a servant. Now how he upset his master we shall never know, but few arguments ever had such terrible consequences as this. For as the man ran from his master's home, not knowing how he would face his master again, he came to the barrow on the cliff, and quite by chance found the tiny entrance to its depths. He crawled inside, curious and yet terrified, as the smell of the sleeping beast grew stronger in his nostrils. He found the hoard and the dragon, and would have run at first sight of it, had not the hoard given him the solution to his problem. He took one beautiful golden goblet to give to his master, and escaped. You would have thought, as the churl did, that the dragon would not notice one little cup missing from that huge pile, but the moment it woke, it knew it was gone. He was that greedy he knew every tiny coin in that pile. A great rage rose like a mighty fire in his guts, and looking for blame, he saw a human footprint in the passage. So he knew it was a man who stole the goblet, and so he flew out, cast his shadow again over the world of men, swimming through the sky in a torrent of fire and smoke. Like a meteor, he sweeped over the towns and villages, burning the houses to the ground with his infernal breath, only returning to his hole when Beowulf's own hall and his gift throne itself was blackened and ruined. The tears and wails of the grieving mothers and children rent the king's heart. Beowulf looked at the very throne of his kingdom lying smoking as he heard the keening wails of the bereft and knew he had to seek revenge and ensure the future safety of his people. He had a mighty iron shield made, as a wooden shield would have been useless against fire. Then he, twelve shield-bearing warriors, and the churl who had stolen the goblet, set off for the barrow on the cliff. The churl was forced to go too, to show the way. He was terrified. But Beowulf was not afraid. He had faced so many dangers and challenges. This was but one more. They reached the hill near the barrow, and he told his followers, Men, for fifty years I have protected you and given you what I could, as a true lord should. And now, though I am old, I will face this breather of fire alone. I will win the dragon's gold for us, or die. 
The churl showed him the hidden entrance to the passageway and then ran so fast back to the other warriors you'd have thought the dragon had already set fire to his pants. But Beowulf stood at the entrance and roared, Lizard, come forth and meet thy doom. Beowulf has come, and so has your long rest in hell. Smoke issued from the hole, closely followed by the ugly snout of the monster. It heaved its mighty bulk out of the passageway and bellowed in rage at brave Beowulf. There he stood, in his plate armour, his ancient sword nagling, you remember, the one he got from Hrothgar, held firmly in his iron grip, glinting sharply in the sunlight. The dragon shot a jet of flame at Beowulf, but he hid behind his new shield and stood proud. Then he swung his sword at the dragon in reply, but it bounced harmlessly off its hard scales. Beowulf suddenly knew he had met a foe unlike any other, and the dragon came hard, spitting such a torrent of fire that it made the king's iron shield glow like a horseshoe in a forge. Beowulf was forced to drop it. His weapons had failed him. Death faced him, as it does us all in the end. Our lives are only lent to us. The dragon spat more fire, and Beowulf felt its searing pain for the first time. The twelve warriors saw their master's strength fail, but so did their courage. They fled into the forest. All that is, but one. Wiglaf was his name. He saw the pain on Beowulf's face, and remembering all the good things his king had done for him, he was determined to help. He tried to persuade the others, but they refused to follow him. He had never been in battle before, but despite the fear in his heart, he went forward to face the danger. "'My king, let's make a song of our fight together!' cried the brave youth, and his words rallied Beowulf's strength. They rushed at the dragon. The dragon's fire turned Wiglaf's wooden shield to ashes, but he took up the fallen iron shield of his master and hid beneath it as the wave of fire washed over him. Meanwhile, Beowulf swung his mighty sword with all the strength he could muster. It stuck fast in the creature's scaly skin and was pulled from his grasp. The dragon seized our brave king by the throat in his terrible jaws, lifted him clear of the ground, and Beowulf felt his lifeblood spilling out of him. Fire surrounded him all the while. Then Wiglaf, desperate to save his king, leapt forward and seeing the dragon's soft belly revealed as it stood up with the king in its mouth, thrust his sword into its chest. Instantly the fire was stopped and the king was dropped. Seizing his chance and his sword from the dragon's skin, Beowulf slit the dragon's belly from bottom to top, its steaming guts spilled onto the cold ground, and it fell dead. But Beowulf was in a state no warrior can hope to recover from. He had lost more blood than a person would know they have, and what blood was left to him carried poison death from the dragon's teeth to his noble heart. Wiglaf tenderly removed his helmet and washed his face. Wiglaf, bring the dragon's hoard out into the sunlight, so I can see what my life has bought for my people. Wiglaf did so. The gold, silver, and jewels were a sight to behold. I have done well. I have ruled in peace these fifty years. No others dared to attack us. We sought not for new feuds and war, and I killed none of my own people. I leave them rich and safe from the dragon. Wiglaf, you will rule after me as you are the only one of our family that remains, and you have shown your true worth this day. The rest fell when fate decided they must, and now I must follow them. And so saying, Beowulf passed from this world. They burnt his body on a mighty funeral pyre, and placed his ashes in a new barrow on the cliffs that jutted out into the sea. And whenever sailors passed that way, they saw it, and thought again of the kindest, most generous, and bravest Lord that the land can remember. And that's the end of my tale as I heard it said, and if there's a fib in it, I'm off home to bed. 
I hope you enjoyed our story today. If you want more, just subscribe to our YouTube channel or our blog. And if you'd like to draw or paint a picture to go with the story, we'd love to put it on the video or on the website. So please share it with us by taking a photo and sending it to treehousetheatre.com or you can share it with us on our Facebook page. So until next time, cheerio! Tales from the Treehouse